What's up, YouTube? Today we are looking at my top five favorite new features in Cubase 12. So Steinberg did actually update my version of Cubase for the purpose of this video, but I've been a happy paying customer of Cubase for the last over a decade. So their generosity didn't alter my decision or alter my opinion of the product in any way, but just to be transparent and so that you guys know what's going on, Steinberg did actually uh, update me for the purpose of this video. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look at my top five favorite new features in Cubase 12. Let's dive in and have a look. So number five is the revamped logical editor system. What they've done is they basically split the logical editor presets and the logical editor setup into two different systems. You basically have the ability to call just presets. So let's go logical editor presets. Um, we can cycle through a bunch of like user presets. Those are the ones that you'd obviously create yourself using the setup. And they've also added a bunch of really handy factory presets, stuff for randomizing note lengths, randomizing velocity, transpose, all sorts of stuff like that. So there's a bunch of really handy presets to get you started anyway. So I find like you don't actually have to jump in too much into the logical editor presets, except if you want to kind of like uh, create your own complex macro systems and stuff like that. Then you can go into the setup and you have the ability to like really dive in and create some complex logical editor stuff here. I think they've added some new conditions here as well. So for example, there was just delete transform and insert whereas now i think they've added all of these ones here as well i'll have to explore that a little bit more to know exactly what those do but just so you guys know that they have actually revamped the logical editor preset system so that's pretty cool so number four on my list is the ability to warp clips directly on the timeline so previously with audio clips if you wanted to warp them to like fit the grid of your track a little bit nicer you'd have to have to actually open it up down here and do the warping over there now they've actually added an extra tool over here, the free warp tool. And what this does is this gives you the ability to actually warp your loops and stuff directly on the timeline. So this is great because it allows you to actually line stuff up. Say for example, you've got like a snare there. You can actually see exactly where the snare is, line it up like that, and then see exactly where the next snare is and line it up like that. So if you've got these kind of like drum loops and stuff and you wanna get it really, really tight and you wanna line up multiple channels, this is a fantastic new tool to be able to do this. And also if you've got like quantizing happening and stuff in the project, like let's say for example, we've got some swing in the project, it'll actually be able to snap to that a little bit better because, okay, we'd actually have to go use quantize. And you can see that the swing here is now on the actual project timeline. So we can warp these things onto like a swing pattern just to make things extra, extra tight. I think that's an absolutely huge new feature just makes workflow a little bit easier across the board. I end up using that uh, warp tool quite a bit. So that's gonna be really nice to be able to do that directly within the project timeline. So feature number three is the ability to drag audio loops onto the chord track. And what happens then is Cubase then suggests chords depending on the audio content of the loop. So I'm sure you guys know by now, I'm incredibly bad at writing chord progressions. I find like they always come out sounding really cheesy and really like uh, just really stale. So this is really cool because this just generates a bunch of new ideas for you that you can use. You don't have to use them, you know. <laughs> So now I, for the life of me, can't work out a nice uh, riff of chords that will work with this lead that I've made. So we can just use Cubase to automatically generate us an idea of different chords we can use. I find that you often have to actually jump in here and maybe remove one or two of them, maybe adjust one or two of them just to fit a little bit better. Um, you often have to just move them a little bit onto the grid just to fit a little bit nicer. Uh, this is just another bonus as well. Um, for those Halion Sonic SE users, um, another new feature in Cubase 12 is this new Verve uh, piano that they've added. It's a bunch of different kind of multi-sample piano presets for Halion Sonic. So here, the chords are triggering Halion Sonic. So if we so solo this and the drums, yeah, then it's gonna give us our suggestions here on that channel. So like I said, I often have to jump in and actually maybe mute some of them, maybe change some of them or move some of them around just to get it a little bit tighter. Um, I feel like maybe this D4 sus doesn't work, um, but let's just see how this goes, play with things a little bit. But I think just the ability that it's kind of like kickstarted the idea 
So now I have an idea of what chords can work. I just need to figure out in what sequence they work in best. I think that's really powerful. So number two on my list of top five favorite new features in Cubase 12 is the custom MIDI remote scripts. So in previous versions, this was actually possible, but it was a bit of a pain in the butt. I think there was some things that were possible about it, but now they've just completely revamped the system and made it so intuitive that it's actually, I'm gonna be using it a lot more. Over here, we go studio, studio setup. And what we wanna do is here in MIDI remote, we wanna open MIDI remote manager. And here, what this allows us to do is create custom MIDI scripts for any MIDI controllers that we want. So there will be, I'm sure there'll be manufacturers creating scripts for all their MIDI controllers and stuff so that they'll work intuitively with different softwares. I'm sure like it happens with Ableton Live, but it's actually so easy to create your own scripts. Check this out. So here, what I wanna do is just, because I'm, I'm gonna be creating a script for my DIY MIDI controller that I've made out of an Arduino. So here, what I'm gonna call it is, let's just call it the Dash Glitch DG1. That's the model. And there we go, next. And here, it allows us to actually create knobs, buttons, or faders, depending on what's actually on our hardware. So here, what you do is you create a knob, then turn the corresponding knob on your hardware. Create another knob, turn the corresponding knob, turn the corresponding knob, and so on and so forth. So here we've created four knobs, so it reflects exactly what's happening on the hardware, and what I'm gonna do is just make it a bit smaller like this, and then we can click Next. So we've automatically MIDI learned our remote script. It's as easy as that. So here what we can do now is jump into particular plugins or use uh, quick controls to map these four parameters to almost any plugin within Cubase. So let's say for example, uh, I want to put like a compressor on the master bus and I wanna tweak it uh, in real time with the hardware parameters. I'm gonna pop a compressor onto the master bus. So you'll see there's a new button here at the top, QC or quick controls. So how this works is I've actually already assigned these to various parameters in the plugin. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys how to do it yourselves. So you click QC learn mode over here, click on the first parameter, and then you choose the corresponding parameter that you want to map this to. It's pretty much like Ableton uh, mapping, how that, how that works. And so here what we wanna do is right click and say pick for MIDI remote mapping. And then you turn the corresponding MIDI controller that you wanna map and click apply mapping. Then you go to the next one, pick for MIDI remote. And you'll see here it says focus QC, focus QC. And what that means is that's gonna now, it's gonna now apply this MIDI to the quick controls. So any plugin we jump to are automatically gonna be assigned to those four quick controls. Watch this. Uh, let's just finish this off here. QC3, apply mapping, QC4, apply mapping. So there's various things that make this really, really cool. One is the fact that every time we open the same plugin, these same four parameters are gonna be mapped to the quick controls. And so that means that we have this really quick hands-on workflow every time we open the same plugin. Also, let's say for example, we've got a vital over here. And now I wanna set this vitals QC, quick controls, to the first four macros. Let's go learn, and now these will be assigned to these macros. So now say for example, I wanna carry on playing with this vital, like this preset here, 
but I want this hardware to still control this compressor. What you can do is you can click this little padlock icon over here. And what this does is now this is the QC focus lock. What that means is this hardware is gonna always control this plugin, even if this is focused. So now we can go ahead and uh, tweak these parameters on the hardware and you'll see that the macros are no longer turning here. And we can go and we can change things within the plugin or we can jump back here or uh, jump over here, click this and say unlock and then lock this to vital. And then these macros we can play around with while we fine tuning the compressor like with a mouse or something like that. So this is cool because we've got this like hands-on control and super fluid workflow, which I think is particularly something that's kind of been a little bit lacking in previous versions of Cubase. Yes, you were able to set up these MIDI remotes and stuff like that, but not as easily. So it was a bit of a nightmare and most people didn't even know about it. So another really cool thing about this is the fact that the QC parameters are automatically read-write assigned. So what that means is the MIDI is now you know, all you need to do is play the track while you hit read write, tweak the MIDI parameters here on the hardware, and it automatically writes that assignment into automation as opposed to into a MIDI clip like it did before. You could set it up to get your MIDI to automatically write to automation, but it was like in a bunch of settings and I always forget how to actually do that. So this is just makes things a lot more fluid and a lot more uh, workflow friendly. Check this out. So number one on my list of favorite features in Cubase 12 is the new FX modulator. So what this is, is it's basically a multi-FX which comprises of most of Cubase's other effects, but built into a single plugin. But there's one particularly cool thing here, which I don't think is achievable with any of the other Cubase effects. That is this time shifter effect. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Freddy Loop's gross beat. This basically gives you the ability to draw in time shifts in real time. So let's say, for example, um, you guys heard the beat that was playing now. Let's draw in a curve downwards like this. So it kind of, kind of reminds me a little bit of Infiltrator where this is like your modulation. These parameters control this modulation over here. Um, and then at the bottom here, some of these modules have various parameters which you can actually modulate. So let's say for example, add a pitch shifter. Here we can modulate the formant and the detune uh, independently. So we could, for example, do like a formant shift like this or draw in any kind of shape. There's pre-made banks of shapes that you can use over here. Or what you can do is you can go and save your own by just clicking over here and you can see that it's now saved us one of these. We can go like this and I'll create various different kind of like variations of that. There's also this dice function over here. So this allows us to randomize uh, the shapes and then we can go ahead and save them if we like them, randomize some more, save this one, etc etc very fluid workflow i like this So here's something really interesting about this plugin is each of these effects has a filter bank. What that does is that allows you to choose in which frequency range that effect is working. 
So this kind of gives us multiband capabilities as we, we can as we can choose each like free, for each of these effects we can choose a specific frequency band. So we can say for example this time shift and pitch shift we want full frequency, but the all the other stuff which is kind of like uh, morphing the sound and stuff uh, that's not doing like time based shifting, we can do like frequency uh, frequency specific processing. <laughs> So some pretty wild things you can do with this. It's also great for just traditional like uh, side chaining and all sorts of stuff like that. One of the cool things about this is it's actually got a MIDI trigger input, so you can get some pretty technical side chain stuff going on. Um, it's got an actual audio side chain built in. Obviously, that's using the traditional Cubase side chain system over here. I'm not going to dive too deep into that kind of stuff. I'm sure you guys will figure it out, or I'll do some future tutorials on this kind of beat mangling type of stuff. But yes, this is definitely my favorite new feature in Cubase 12. So a couple of other really cool features. Uh, Cubase has actually added the ability to use a scale assistant inside your very audio. So what that means is you can actually grab scale information and automatically snap like vocals. You can automatically pitch those to your scale and stuff like that. So they've just added a little bit more intelligence onto that level of things. I don't do too much vocal processing. So I'm not going to get too in depth with that in this video. The spectrum keys view within a supervision. So what this does is it basically gives you what notes are being played at what time. Just makes things a little bit easier if you're listening to a sound and you want to try to figure out what notes or for tuning and that kind of thing. Very, very cool little tool that they've added. Plus another couple of other new modules in supervision. So for those Apple users, Cubase 12 now natively supports Apple Silicon. So for those users out there with the latest Apple hardware, you'll know that Cubase 12 definitely works. So that's a plus side for you. Although, as you can see, I'm on Windows, so it doesn't affect me too much. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's about it for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. See you guys next time. Cheers.